The Westland Welkin is quite a unique design, being designed for a very specific role. That role being an extremely high altitude heavy fighter. The word Welkin is an old English word meaning the sky or heaven. The British before the war had experimented with high altitude pressurised aircraft. In July 1940, the Air Ministry issued specification F440 calling for a high altitude interceptor with a top speed of 725 km per hour, an operational ceiling of 45,000 feet and six 20mm cannons. Westland responded to this with design P14, which was somewhat an adaption of the heavy fighter, the Westland Whirlwind. Renewed interest from the RAF for a high altitude interceptor came when in the fall of 1940, the Luftwaffe started to send specially modified Junkers Ju-86Ps over Britain on reconnaissance flights at extremely high altitudes. There were fears that the Germans might utilise these bombers to begin bombing London from these high altitudes. In January 1941, permission was given to Westland by the Ministry of Aircraft Production to build two prototypes of the P-14 design. Later that year, the design had been revised slightly to meet a revised specification in F-741. This meant the P-14 would be competing against the Vickers Type 432, although the Type 432 never advanced past one prototype. The design featured a massive high aspect ratio wing that measured some 70 feet long being 15 feet longer than the wings of the whirlwind. The whirlwind's fowler flaps were not needed and thus the P-14 had a simpler split flap system. The Rolls-Royce Peregrines that had been fitted to the whirlwind and been the source of great trouble was replaced with the Rolls-Royce Merlin 61 engine. The cockpit was also extensively redesigned, becoming pressurised and requiring a much more sophisticated electrical system which minimised the number of seals and points of entries needed for the controls and instruments of the aircraft. The sophistication of the new system was such that it is said that an electrician with experience on the type would still take four hours to undertake a pre-flight check of the system. The tail was also lengthened to help combat increased instability brought about by the bigger wings. Even though the original specification called for six 20mm cannons, the P-14 was only equipped with four Hispano 20mm cannons. The Welcome prototype flew for the first time on the 1st of November 1942 with Harold Penrose at the controls. Trials began well, with only minor problems reported and a slow roll rate, but that was somewhat expected considering the wingspan of the aircraft. However, a major flaw was found when diving tests were undertaken. When reaching speeds around the 800 km per hour mark when in a dive, pilots reported that the machine began to vibrate and shake severely. This was due to compressibility issues caused by the airflow over the wings becoming supersonic while the aircraft was travelling subsonic and thus creating shock waves. The Americans had encountered similar problems, particularly with the P-38 Lightning, but had found that reducing the thickness cold ratio of the wing did help alleviate the problem. The design of the Welkin wing was such that this reduction was not possible. Thus, if the Welkin was ever to get into combat, the enemy plane always had the option of diving away and the Welkin not being able to follow. An order for 100 and then 200 followed and the first production aircraft took to the skies in August 1943. First production aircraft were designated Welkin F Mark 1s and powered by either a Merlin 72 or 76 engine on the left and a Merlin 73 or 77 engine on the right side of the aircraft. The right engine had the addition of a rotor blower to pressurise the cockpit. A constant pressure of 3.5 psi over the exterior pressure was achieved in the cockpit and when flying at 45,000 feet meant that the cabin altitude was only 24,000 feet. This was still high enough for oxygen masks to be worn and pilots also had to wear high altitude flight suits in case of ejections at such altitudes. By now, Germany had abandoned any high altitude reconnaissance or bombing missions over Britain, and the need for such a dedicated fighter evaporated. Hence, the RAF lost interest in the project. 
Additionally, types such as the Spitfire and specially designed Mosquitoes have proven capable of being able to fight at such altitudes if needed. Thus, the Welcome was cancelled after 77 had been produced, as well as 26 airframes minus the engines. Very, very few of these 77 would see any service, with the vast majority being scrapped. Two did serve with the Fighter Interception Unit based at Wittering from May to November 1944 to practice and develop high altitude tactics. Westland did design a dedicated night fighter version of the Welkin, designated the Welkin NF Mark II. This added AI Mark VIII radar in a thimble nose and added a radar operator who sat backwards behind the pilot. An order for two prototypes were received in February 1943 under specification F943, and the first example flew on the 23rd of October 1944. An order for 60 was given, however the order and the second prototype was cancelled in 1945. And that brought an end to the Westland Welkin program.